Hello, hi, good morning. I am so glad to be here with you. I am Stephanie Lindloff from Our Natural Wisdom. And um, yeah, welcome to my weekly transmission. Um, if you have been here before, welcome back. So good to see you again. Thanks for joining. I am an eco-intuitive coach and teacher, and I help women who are anxious perfectionists to reclaim your peace through nature. Good morning, Kay. Thanks for joining. Good to see you. Today, I'm going to be talking about weathering life's storms with your natural wisdom. And boy, we all experience storms through life, right? Whether little storms, big storms that last a long time. For the, the woman who really struggles with anxiety, this can be such a challenge, especially when we have a generalized anxiety, right? When we're kind of um, struggling to figure out what is triggering us, what is causing this anxiety within us. And when it's general in nature, it can be really debilitating because it can cause us to spiral into worrying about all sorts of things that are beyond our control, all sorts of things that are focused towards the future. So centering and grounding with nature and with Mother Earth is always such a powerful practice to fall back into, a way to reawaken your self-compassion and connect with your soul's wisdom, your higher self, your true essence, all of these things that lead you to greater clarity and peace in your life. Good morning, everybody. Once again, thank you so much for joining. I want you to know that you already hold within your heart all of the wisdom that you need to weather any storm that you may face within your life experience. From those, you know, daily chaotic things that really set you off to long protracted events. And the the key is to allow yourself to tap into your sacred connection with your soul to allow yourself to come into a place of presence and to open your heart to hear your intuitive guidance your intuition is the language of your soul and we were all born with intuition so when we connect more deeply with the sacred relationship that you have with mother earth you are allowing yourself to come into much deeper contact with your soul your beautiful loving wise compassionate soul that is always pointing you the way to go always helping you understand what will most deeply heal you and help you in that moment so I was really thinking about this today because it's been a challenging week for me. Um, the kids are on spring break and my oldest, my daughter, who's 11, is on her first big trip away from home. She's down in Florida with a friend and her family and it's the first time that I've been away from her for any like long period of time. And if you've experienced this as a parent, you know especially as an anxious parent, all of the crazy ass things that come to your mind of what could possibly happen when you're away from your child. So I have really been falling back into this practice of deep presence and connecting with my soul's support and wisdom and reassurance rather than allowing myself to spin off into um, you know a billion possibilities of what could go wrong right of course our egoic mind wants to focus on what could go wrong so our ego mind is trying to protect us from what could possibly hurt us or go wrong in our lives this is not what our soul's guidance provides, however. Our soul provides us with that reassurance, that knowing that things are okay, that everything is going to be safe, and that everything is going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. My daughter's going to be okay. And that is coming into presence. That is just being in the moment and appreciating the calm and the peace in the moment and really 
savoring that and knowing that this is a connection with divine guidance, with divine support, with your, with the angels that are surrounding all of us and our loved ones, especially in times where we're separated. So that was one aspect of my week. And secondly, my son, who is five and is mildly autistic, his schedule, he really depends upon a a consistent schedule. And because he's not in school in the mornings, his schedule has been off and he has had a lot of really challenging behaviors that have come up. So not only have I been, you know, thinking about the anxiety of my, my daughter being gone, but working with my son and being with my son, being present to his needs and how I can best support him in each moment has then, you know, that has been anxiety provoking as well. And yet it's, it's a life storm, right? It's one of those little passing storms. I know that if I come into a place of presence while he is struggling, I can much more effectively support him, much more effectively support him and support myself through it because I'm able to tap into my knowing of how to best support him and myself in that time. So this really came to the forefront with respect to a connection with Mother Earth. The other day, I was walking out in our front yard. There were snowflakes in the air. You know, it's late March. It's that time of year when you might have 70 degrees and then the next day you get a blizzard and an ice storm and it's the weather's kind of all over the place. And I was looking at some of our native plants that were coming up and uh, a woman walked by and she was like, oh, are you checking on your plants? Oh, you must be so worried. This weather is so, you know, difficult and I'm really worried about my tulips. And she was like, you know, she she was in a place of anxiety about her garden, about what she is worried could happen within her garden with all of these plants that I'm sure she loves so much. And I realized in that moment that I have zero anxiety about our garden, zero worry about it. Why? Because we have used plants that are native to this place. They are tough. They are resilient. Yes, they have those times of tenderness, but they also have such incredible strength because they are in, they are grounded. They are tapped into their highest selves, to their greatest purpose. We brought them back into the space where they belong, where they are most connected with life force energy and everything about that that serves them so that they can weather life storms. And I realized how, you know, from a gardening perspective, for many years and through my childhood, we, I and my parents planted plants that didn't live here. They lived in other regions or other, you know, um, hardiness zones or other um, countries altogether. They didn't belong here, right? And we babied them. We put sheets over them if there was a chance of a frost. There were all sorts of things that we would do to coddle these plants and to protect protect them from being hurt. And I started realizing that's kind of like the egoic mind, what our ego mind does when we are in a place of anxiety, when we are trying to weather a storm that we are going through. There's all of these fixes, all of these intricate solutions that we seek out. And it's because that mind, those plants from other regions are not prepared. They're not able to deeply connect with their true essence, with the life force energy, with the trust and the knowledge and the wisdom that is ancient within these plants. And so I realized how it's such a beautiful connection with our ability to connect with our soul and how native plants are reminding us, welcoming us, that we all hold this powerful wisdom within ourselves to connect with our souls, to call upon our soul's guidance and to do it 
throughout our days in a variety of ways, whether you're outside or inside, whether you're waiting in line at the DMV or waiting at a hospital, waiting for news about a loved one. We have the ability, you have the ability to tap into your soul's guidance at any time, to tap into your soul's reassurance and wisdom and love and compassion. And truly, I believe that planting native plants around your space, it increases the vibration of your space. It increases the vibration of your home, of your garden, of your neighborhood, and perhaps even of your community and the world to allow nature within your gardens to tap into their true selves. This is about weathering the storm. These plants, these native beautiful plants will remind you that you also have the ability to weather any storm when you tap into your natural wisdom. And if this kind of teaching resonates for you, whether you're new to gardening or an experienced gardener and you're looking to make a shift to an easier way of gardening, a more soulful way of gardening, I invite you to check out my online course, Reclaim Your Peace, Cultivating Self-Compassion Through Soulful Gardening. You can learn all about it by clicking the link in bio. We are enrolling right now for spring. It's a perfect time to take this class. You'll learn all of the essentials to creating your own vibrant native garden and how it allows you to deepen your connection with your soul. So right now I wanted to take just a moment to take some nice deep cleansing breaths so that you can experience what it's like to connect with your soul. Taking those nice deep breaths, coming into your heart, Feel how as you bring your awareness to your heart, you're automatically experiencing more presence, more peace. You are connecting with your soul. The heart space is the portal to your soul. Your beautiful soul is always with you. It's really about your awareness, opening your awareness to your soul and feeling how your soul is present here with you and in any moment that you need. And breathing into this space, picture how your heart is holding all of these beautiful flowers that are of this space, of the place where you live. They evolved there for thousands of years. These are the plants that hold the deepest wisdom of weathering life storms, of resiliency and strength and foundation and groundedness. These are the plants within your heart, these beautiful blooms that you now see unfurling all of the colors that benefit the pollinators, wildlife, birds, the soil itself, the air itself, the water are all benefited from these beautiful plants. And as you are holding this within you, within your heart space, see how it is blooming throughout your body, this blooming connection with your soul. Breathe that in and see how the flowers are just flowing through your entire body from the top of your head to the tips of your fingers all the way to the tips of your toes. You are a gorgeous garden, a garden of soulful connection, a garden that holds all of the answers and your answers are found in your presence your presence to the garden that is within you, 
your presence to the earth, your presence to your soul. So pausing for a moment to hear any loving message that your soul, your intuition has for you in this moment. Breathing that message in, whether it comes in words or in images or in simply a sensation, an emotion that you may be feeling. And allowing that to integrate throughout your entire body, trusting that you hold the answers within, that you have the ability to connect with your soul throughout your day any storm that you are going through you hold the answers you hold the resilience mm. thank you so much for joining me today it was such a pleasure thank you Kay yes our wind chimes really kicked up there during the journey didn't they love the wind chimes so once again, if this kind of work resonates for you, I really encourage you to check out my online course. It starts on April 10th and you can link, click the link in bio to learn all about it. Reclaim your peace, cultivating self-compassion through soulful gardening. You'll learn just how easy it is to create a beautiful, vibrant garden of native plants right outside your door. And you'll be able to connect with your soul in moments throughout your day from anywhere, indoors and outdoors. It would be such a pleasure to journey with you in that course. And I look forward to seeing you again next Thursday at 10 a.m. Central. Thanks again. Have a beautiful day, everyone. Bye-bye.